Hello again, my name is Loretta Edelin and it is a pleasure to have you join us today for the National Day of Racial Healing Program. We're going to go ahead and get started in just a minute by bringing Dr. Molly Beth Malcolm, our Executive Vice President of Campus Operations and Public Affairs, up to the mic. So please come and take your seats. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today for the National Day of Racial Healing. Now more than ever before, I think it's extremely important to engage in the restorative practices of racial healing and fostering greater understanding between people. As we all know, we're living in dangerous times where people are actively trying to drive wedges between us, not just in our country, but all over the world. And that's why it's even more important to celebrate what we share and what makes us stronger. That's our rich diversity and our humanity. And finding out that we all have a lot more in common with each other than we have differences when we talk to each other. Today, across the country, it is the National Day of Racial Healing. So there are programs going on all across the country with all races and all faiths coming together to bring beautiful contributions of art and music and conversation. With one voice, we're all saying we're here, we aren't going anywhere, and we're going to continue to fight for racial equity so that everyone can succeed and achieve their highest aspirations. And that's extremely important to us here at Austin Community College. We have woven equity into everything we're doing and continue to do it more and more. We even rewrote our strategic plan with an eye toward equity to be sure that we were addressing these important issues. We're continuing at ACC on an equity-wide uh, journey to ensure that the college is welcoming of all people, and not only just welcoming, that we're doing what we can to help our students where they need help, and whatever, wherever that may be. This journey does include a commitment from their very top, from our board of trustees, to our president, to our administration, all the way down. Now, have we got it all right yet? Nope, but we are committed, and we're working on it, and we're going to get there. Today, we're going to have some great entertainment and some thought-provoking art that's been done by our ACC students and our important community members. But before we do that, I have some introductions that I want to make. And I would like to begin with, we have one of our Board of Trustees members joining us today, Dr. Nora Comstock. And we also have our one of our Executive Vice President, our Provost, Dr. Charles Cook. And there are many, many other faculty members and staff members here, but there's one new person that I want all of you to meet, and we are so excited about this. Uh, you know that we've had this Truth Racial Healing Transformation Center planning grant now into the third year, and one of the commitments is that we would have a physical space. We don't have that yet. We're getting there. But that we would also hire a full-time person to be the Truth Racial Healing Transformation Campus Center to director. We've done that, and I'm pleased to get to introduce you to him today, and you'll hear from him at the end of the program, but Kyrie Williams, would you stand up, Kyrie? Please welcome Kyrie. He's beginning his third week today, correct? And he hit the ground running and has been doing some remarkable things, so you're going to really enjoy working with him, uh, and, and then you're going to hear from him at the end of the program. Now. If everyone would please rise for the national anthem played by ACC student and veteran Sherry Taylor and join us in the national anthem.
thank you so much. Now, I have, please be seated and on with the program. Thank you, Dr. Malcolm. Hello, and thank you all for being here. Um, I'm TJ Hilton, Exhibition Coordinator for the Art Department, and the ACC Art Department is excited to be a part of this important event. We have worked to bring a visual art component to this program, and we hope you'll take the time to look at the art display behind you. We have pieces made by ACC students, and we're also able to partner with the Open Chair Project, as well as Sarah Lee Hughes and Stephen Collins, who made the animated film, The Journey of Two Unlikely Friends. So we would like to thank Sarah Lee and Stephen, as well as Open Chair collaborators, uh, Brittany Williams, Chuka Agbarji, Tamar Price, and Moyo Oyolala. We would also like to thank Loretta Edelin, Kyrie Williams, Samantha Creek, Roberta Weston, Bernardo Diaz, Matthew Krebs, Jin Young Cha, Julie Isaacson, and the ACC Electricians and Multimedia Services. We also have an interactive portion called the Holy Moment where you can spend some time really seeing someone else. Participants will receive a small piece of artwork afterward. Seek out our volunteers in the back uh, wearing purple t-shirts and they will instruct you further. I would also like to thank those volunteers, Allison Skinner, Heather Pickett, Chelsea Stowers, Rowan Limbach, and Connor Tesney. After the event, all artwork is gonna be moved upstairs into the upper elevator corridor. Uh, through the month of February. So please come anytime to see the work, as well as an exhibition of work by ACC faculty, art faculty and jewelry faculty, which can be found in the lower elevator corridor. Thank you and enjoy the program. Each person is gonna just come up one right after the other. Brant Loveless. Hello everyone, how y'all doing? All these beautiful faces in this room. So I'll be reading two pieces to you all today. So just sit back and relax and listen to my beautiful voice. Thank you, thank you, call people problems. The first one is called Unknown. There is more to me than what you see. There is more to me than my delicious melanin. There is more to me than my brightening smile. There is more to me than my warming laughter and demeanor. There is more to me. When I am depressed, that is something no one can see me being. My smile hides the pain I feel, the trauma I combat. My laughter is a force field that keeps people from asking questions. My affirmations have molded into my insecurities. I am not perfect, nor am I the best. I have days where my skin is threaded into my bed sheets, where the birds chirping outside my window are my symphony. And I let sadness cuddle me, opening wounds and letting them bleed. I am the happiness that, bur that buries anxiety, I am the light that shines over the ugly truth. I am the sexiness that hides depression. I am unknown. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The second one is called My Curiosities. There we go. My name is, what is my name? Who am I today? The mirror I see before me reminds me of a better me. My reflection is perfect and flawless. The image I see is within me, but the mirror I see is, be is a better me. Not me, but something evolved. And I couldn't put my pride aside and see that I was different. I wanted to be, with, be within the mirror, 
in another world different from my own, away from judgment and pain, to be reinvented and live the light that, the light that was inside me. The light that I suppressed in which I caressed old photos of the man I want to see. This is not a dream or a plead. It is a fantasy that I want to be free and feel home inside of reality. This reality I want to take ownership of in my own two hands. But in the fight for this reality, I'm not ready. But in, this, but in fear, I unclench the truth in my hand and see the energy twist into a spiral galaxy. But this, but this is something reformed. I look up and see that the mirror begins to crack and unfold. My name is, the mirror bends and breaks. My name is, the mirror begins to shake and tremble. My name is, the mirror cracks and bursts into a million precious stones beneath my feet. My name is acceptance. My skin begins to split and divide. My name is strength. My skin begins to twist and turn. My name is Survivor. My skin begins to expand and glow. The butterflies begin to flutter and fly in the horizon. I accepted my change and left the mirror to rot. In my beauty, I am excellent. In my name, I am great. In all, I am me. In love with my curiosities, accepting all my insecurities. Thank you. If you know you're amazing, clap once. If you know you're amazing, clap twice. If you know you're amazing, clap three times. Hey. All right. Um, cool. So I'm going to ask for three people to give me three different words, and then I'm going to serenade you with some thoughts while these people give me these words. And then we'll see what the ancestors and the divine have for me to talk to you about today. So um, beautiful being with the glasses, looking at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right here. Yeah, you, you, you. In the red glasses and, the, and, and you behind, and then beautiful being behind them with the beautiful hair. You, 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 you with the smile. Uh-huh. I need a word from you, a word from you, and a word from you. Please, just one word. You think about it. All right, y'all keep thinking, I'm gonna talk. Hi, amazing greetings, beautiful beings. My name is Fatima or Fatima. My mom calls me both. I prefer both. I, I answer to both. I am the birther and founder of Community Advocacy and Healing Project. We are an organization that focuses on culturally mindful healing and human-centered experiences and policy reform. I have a law degree. I've been barefoot for four years. They call me the Barefoot Empress. You can Google it. I am the Barefoot Empress. Um, I do yoga. I teach classes. I would love for you to join us tomorrow at our community check-in where we'll do some healing work and um, look at how are we um, advocating for people from a healing lens. Uh, we'll be to at the Carver Library at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. If you're free, come hang out with me and some other beautiful people. And uh, you can see how we can change the world through a healing lens and not from an angry one. Cool? So if you know that you're amazing, clap once. If you know you're amazing, clap twice. And if you know you're amazing, clap three times. Awesome. What's your word? Excellent. Thank you. What's your word? Tree? Dope. What's your word? Beautiful. Beautiful tree, excellence. Those are the three words. My ancestors were beautiful before slavery. Black excellence happened when they were on slave ships coming from lands that their mothers had birthed them in. They called us beautiful and excellent before we were enslaved, before our minds became slaves, before we knew that we had to learn how to be beloved again, rooted in the trees of des desperation and love. My ancestors were beautiful before you told me I needed to think that I was beautiful. 
Equity doesn't come from me seeing a devil beside me, but me in your eyes in a beautiful way. See, if I see me in you, beauty, then we can be excellent together, like oak trees holding on to our roots, making sure we don't fly when the storms come. We can be excellent and beautiful together, like oak trees, like nature, like nature, like oak trees, you know, holding on and birthing life seven generations after what we conceived beauty to be. See, we could love each other intimately in an excellent way like the roots and trees how many of us see nature as beauty God herself us in each other's eyes only if we could reimagine what rooting ourselves in the present will do how many of you see you how many of you see you I can't ask for racial equity if you can't see that you are the tree of change you see. If you can't see the beauty in your own eyes, I would be despised to ask you to see the beauty in mine. So how excellent are you loving yourself? Are you drinking water and taking care of your reflection? Have you asked your reflection what it needs today? Have you been rooted and grounded like a tree in your excellence, in your beauty in this moment? And if not, then I invite you to take a deep breath, to hold yourself routed and grounded and rooted in this moment in your beauty, in your excellence, because that's what keeps us together. Grounded and rooted like a tree, our breath makes us excellently, beautifully connected to one another. You are me, we. Wow, another, another hand for Fatima. Beautiful tree of excellence. Excellence. Wanted to take a pause and first thank uh, one of our performers, Leland Adams, for the use of his keyboards. Thank you very kindly. Um, we did have a change in the program in that uh, Mr. Linder, is not going to be joining us this afternoon. However, we are blessed to have the presence and the performances of Danielle Giannis, who is about to set up for us now. Uh, in the meantime, I want to take an opportunity to invite you certainly to Fatima's event tomorrow. Uh, there is going to be another opportunity for racial healing circle participation this evening from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Round Rock Baha'i Center. Uh, if you're interested, it's free and open to the public, but it's a wonderful opportunity to connect. That is part of what this truth, racial healing and transformation is all about. It's centered in this work done by Dr. Gail Christopher. And this Friday, because it is also our first day of classes, we decided to kind of dedicate a little bit more time to having three of these events on Friday, January 24th, from 9 to 12 at the Cypress Creek campus. And that is going to be in room 1108, again, from 9 to 12. We invite you out. If you're not free in the morning, the RX Racial Healing Circle, and then la, la, la. the other option is the Riverside Campus from 1 to 4, and that's going to be in room 9114. We hope that you'll be able to uh, join us for one of these. It's an awesome experience, transformative in and of itself. We now welcome la, la, la. the talented <laughs> Daniel. Thank you, thank you. Okay. La, 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 la. Oh, yeah, there we go. Well, I'm so happy to be here. This is my second year. Last year, I debuted a song that was called uh, um, uh, Endangered Species, Black Men in America. And today, I'd like to uh, debut another song that's very timely, especially since what's happening right today at the, uh, at the US Capitol, right, with, uh, with all the debate of whether people, sh the truth and honesty exists. Because that's really what it's like, you know. Our country did not elect a president. The system elected a president who's a pathological liar. 
So this song is kind of timely on that. But before I, uh, I, I go forward, I'd like to say that earlier on, I went and looked at all the artwork. It is absolutely excellent. This is one of the best exhibits I've seen anywhere in Austin. And I really congratulate ACC and, and all of you all for the excellence that you bring. And I'm going to tell everybody to come look at it. <laughs> OK, so. Sometimes I feel so crazy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 I was scared, scared to do that song. That time. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. So all these so lies, lies, you know. Lies, you know if your mama taught, your mama you, right, taught you right, you ain't gonna believe. Ain't gonna believe. It. And so, so, you know, we gotta, we trust, gotta ourselves. trust ourselves. And you know what, you know uh, what Fatima, Fatima was saying, was saying about, about loving yourself and, yourself and, and, and all, of all of that. So this is so a this song, song called, called uh, I and I. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You so I really much. appreciate, I really appreciate it. it. I think I'm going to be back later back in the program. Later. program. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. This is beautiful. It's been really great to see the art, first of all. Um, my name is Tamar. I'm with the Open Chair Project. Hi, my name is Moyo. Um, thank you to ACC, to Roberta, Loretta, for um, fostering this connection we're about to build. But Open Chair is a project that started out of a desire to, to see more black and brown faces around Austin. We have two other team members, Brittany and Chuka. They couldn't be here today, but they're here in spirit, so they thank you also. Um, last year, around this time, we went to Houston Tillotson for the MLK Fest, and we did portraits that Moyo took beautifully. Um, most of those are 
posted back there, but um, the aim of it was as black people here, um, as Brittany and Chuka are Austinites born and raised here, well, Brittany born and raised here, um, seeing the changes in the city and also realizing that we're a part of a community of artists and creatives that we don't often see reflected all the time. Like we know we're around here, but we wanted other people to see that. Um, it's called open chair because we want people to take a seat, to be present, to be acknowledged. And it's actually beautiful that we're a part of a day of racial healing because I think a big part of healing is acknowledgement and to say that we're here um, and so that other people can foster that connection, um, communication about whatever they need to say. Uh, we also incorporated a portion during the East Austin studio tour, which we uh, first displayed the images at in November, um, but it was a, basically a part that said, say what you gotta say. So we invited people to view the exhibition and also to speak about what they felt about their community, about being in Austin, um, and we got a lot of great responses, and it was beautiful to see people of all races come and view the portraits and be blown away by the simplicity, but the beauty, um, the regality and the people. These are people to, like, around Austin, like your neighbors, your friends. Um, and so it was great to see them broadcast and made huge, um, and that's the aim of this. So, Moya, you have any words? He never has any words because his work speaks for itself, um, as you can see. Um, you can, thank you. Uh, we will have more of these events. So we were actually just at Houston Tillerson yesterday. We're tired, y'all. Uh, but <laughs> we did another round of these portraits, um, and we'll be doing more throughout the community. Um, so to learn more about us, you can go to openchairatx.com. Um, and there'll be more information about other partners. We also want to thank Coca Trevina, who's with um, the Projecto. She's been a great help in just connecting us to people and getting this out there. Um, but yeah, see it right behind you, big, beautiful black people. Um, and we'll, oh, also part of it, the interactive part of it is there is a white chair and a white background. Um, we encourage people to take, be seated, seat yourself, um, show that you were here, take a photo. Um, and if you're on the social medias, please display it. You can use the hashtag seat yourself and also hashtag open chair ATX. Um, so thank you for having us. And we will see all of y'all soon. We'll be at more of it, like I said. So thank you. Before he runs away, please note this is his photo on the front. Oh, I've got it turned backwards here on the front. There you go. Sorry. As we get set up for the artists that are continuing to come, open it. They need a whole lot of space because there's a whole lot of creative juices flowing out of these wonderful students. Uh, can we take a pause and just give some applause for all of the creativity and wonderful sharing that's been going on up to this point? We certainly thank you for your time this afternoon. We all know there are other things you could, <coughs> excuse me, other things you could be doing. Excuse the allergies. But uh, as we transition and set up for the artists that are about to come forward, I'd just like to take another opportunity to plug the wonderful RX racial healing circles that will be happening on this Friday. There is going to be an opportunity this evening again, as I mentioned before, from 8.30 to 6.30 at the Round Rock Baha'i Center for abbreviated racial healing circles. It's, these typically take three to five hours, but ours on Friday will be a three-hour commitment, again, from 9 to 12 at the Cypress Creek campus in room 1108 for the afternoon, if you have that free, from 1 to 4 at the Riverside campus in room 9114 in building G, 
or the South Austin campus in room 1130 from 1 to 4. Uh, you are all welcome to join us. It's free and open to faculty, staff, students, and community uh, because it is through community that we hope to transform all of us. So again, thank you for being here. And without further ado, as I move the microphone out of the way, we we'll welcome our dancers. Knowing who I was going to follow, I probably would have opted out. <laughs> that was incredible. All of these have been incredible. <clears throat> uh, I'm Tobin Corot, and I began to get more engaged and began learning more in the last few years as um, I started working with uh, Stephanie Hawley and Loretta and the group that's doing the Center for Racial healing and transformation. And in the reading and the learning and the interaction, <clears throat> I came up with a couple of poems that capture the beginning stages of my growing awareness. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Uh, first one's called Seeing Clearly. <clears throat> Being of a certain age, I've long worn glasses so that I can see. Those lenses so clear and sharp have eased my way through my daily life and enabled me to see things as they are, 
despite my declining vision. After a lifetime of learning and growing in a world I know and understand, I'm discovering the need for a new set of lenses once again to help me explore worlds that were hidden from me until now. As a white man, what I think of as real, reliable, and true has been colored by cultural lenses that I could not see, most of all, my own. What new lenses can I find now and where to help me once again see? And as kind of a follow-on uh, about that culture that I couldn't see, because I am a man, I see and am seen in certain ways. Because I am white, my sight is limited in some subtle and not so subtle ways to the range and hues of color in the world. Because I was born in a certain part of town, or even in a town, my sense of possibility is shaped and molded in ways I think of as real. Because I entered into this life at a specific moment in time, in a particular family, with a past and pattern that brought me into being, I find myself lost at times when connecting with others. Because I am all of these things and more, I experience life in unique and unnoticed ways. As I listen and learn of your life and your world, perhaps I can move beyond my limitations and join you in a shared reality that is greater and more revealing than the one I inhabit because of who I am. Thank you. My mother, America. I always wanted to see her in her beauty. As a child, I always dreamt of what she would look like or what the age of her hands in history will foretell or how the sweet smell of my ancestors off her skin would taste like. I always consider myself her daughter, unknowingly putting myself coalescently with an impervious hedonistic spirit from lack of knowledge of my father, not knowing the true extensional depth of my bloodline and who I was. At last, meeting her only doused my heart in more misery leaving it on the brink of dilapidation and no way to mend. For I was confounded in this place called America, which figuratively stands for freedom in almost every aspect of the word. But because of lack of knowledge, we choose to refuse to exercise that right. And leaving that word 90% at bay, which constitutes the law in the hands of God machines that orchestrate to keep Satan's law bent on destruction pliable, hinged on dishonest and divisiveness, swarthy not in color or complexion, but in the heart. In her arms as I lay, all I could think about were the other millions of people who were led astray from the Edenic civilizations with nothing but the clothes on their backs, traditions and all that they consisted of at the bottom of the left top pocket like lost lint left stranded for hope of a dream eminently not quenched for. And as I lay in thought, I know now I am just another statistic on Satan's list infuted, infused by the looted images of a mother once sought for with no tangible variances. I know not any more of this devious and tangent. When they ask me, what are you? And I say human, and they get pissed as if Egyptian hieroglyphs have just left my lips, as if not defining my black and whiteness isn't sufficient enough. As if asking will bring clarity to their senses. I'm not a puzzle to be figured out. I am more than this hair. I am more than this skin. I am human. Yes. 
Martin Luther King once said, I have a dream to one day live in a nation where we are not judged by the color of our skin, but the conduct of our character. We may have manifested racism, but we all are the cure. We are all one, and together we can. Thank you. Such awesome talent. Can we get another hand for these performers as we transition to our next dance performance? Uh, Bernardo is coming from Round Rock. And so if you know anything about Austin and traffic, we got to give him a minute. So we are blessed to have yet another art performance. I bring you the artist.
जी तुझसे किस्मत की लकीर हाथों में दिखता था वो प्यार तेरी ही आदत कुछ पड़ सी गई चाहत का ऐसा था खुमार नींद न आए रातों में क्यों बिछड़े लम्हों को लौटा दे तू Do I have to get, how close do I have to get? All right. Good morning, uh, good afternoon. My name is Bernardo Diaz. I am uh, an art professor with the art department here. Uh, I am the individual that worked at Round Rock Campus, made my way over here. Traffic was a little heavier than expected. But uh, my role in this entire event was helping Loretta organize uh, what is essentially a micro-ritual uh, related to the theme and topic of, today, of this year's National Day of Racial Healing, which is uh, the question of visibility and invisibility. Um, I designed this ritual around uh, this heart icon that you see a lot of our volunteers wearing, and I invite you guys to approach the volunteers and to carry out this micro-ritual that will take you less than a minute. Uh, you each will be handed a small heart and will be asked to hold the heart up uh, with one of your pairs uh, participants and say that the effort will be equal. You will look into each other's eyes for about 30 seconds after which you will give a, a, a statement of affirmation 
that is loosely translated from the South African uh, greeting of Saubano that says, I see you, I value you, and you are important to me. Uh, after which, there is a transaction that you can make with your icon. You can go up to the heart and you can take a small piece of uh, art that is essentially a papel picado in the tradition of Mexican folk art. Um, and this idea of gift exchange is uh, alluding to um, the idea of gift giving and the economy of gift giving practiced by tribes of the uh, North Pacific uh, area of the United States. I invite you all to please, once this event is over, once the performances are over, to then go and carry out your own performance uh, with the question of making sure that we see each other with compassion, uh, and we see each other with intelligence, uh, and that we just see each other on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you. How's everybody doing? So, uh, my name is Ron Horn, and um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Edlin for having me at this performance. Uh, I have two messages, one from Dr. King and one from me. Um, I don't know how many people know this, but um, Dr. King was a poet. And uh, so this is kind of a call to action, right? For everybody to get involved, to be visible. So when they told me that it was, you know, the, the theme was uh, invisibility, um, I came across some of these quotes that were perfect. Make a career out of humanity. Commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a better person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. We must rapidly begin the shift from thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. We must come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself a society that can live with its conscience. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. King was a supporter of Cesar Chavez. In 1966, when Chavez marched 300 miles from Delano to Sacramento, California, to draw national attention to the mistreatment of farm workers, King sent Chavez a telegram reading, as brothers, in this fight for equality, I extend the hand of fellowship and goodwill and wish continuing success to you and your members. The fight for equality must be fought on many fronts in the urban slums, in the sweatshots of the factories and fields. Our separate struggles are really one, a struggle for freedom, for dignity, and for humanity. You and your fellow workers have demonstrated your commitment to righting grievous wrongs forced upon explo uh, exploited people. We are together with you in spirit, and in determination that our dreams for a better tomorrow will be realized. Like a boil that can never be cured so long as it's covered up, it must be opened with all its ugliness to the natural medicines of air and light. Injustice must be exposed with all the tension its exposure creates. To the, human, to the light of human conscience and the air of national opinion before it can be cured. True peace is not merely the absence of tension. It's the presence, the presence of justice. If we make the right choice, 
we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our world into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. Just as Socrates felt that it was necessary to create a tension in the mind, in the mind so that individuals could rise from the bondage of myths and half-truths to the unfettered realm of creative analysis and objective appraisal, so must we see the need for nonviolent gadflies to create the kind of tension in society that will help make men rise from the dark depths of prejudice and racism to the majestic heights of understanding and brotherhood. Thank you. Grant, you still here? He, he would do, he, what did he do? He went to lunch? He's on shift. What you talking about? Okay. Fair enough. Uh, professor, can I get you to help me? Yeah. No, yeah, you, you, got, uh, you got a little rhythm, right? Okay, here we go. All right, very simple. Okay. So you might want to, like, take them with you. And I'm going to give you, I'm just going to start, and I'm just going to let you go, okay? <laughs> I trust you, man. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, I do. I trust you. All right. <clears throat> this is me creating tension. Child, run from guns, child, run from war, child, run from death, child, never more. Mm, I am your sanctuary. You gotta run, please hurry. Mm, dodging bullets, mm, escape the flames, mm, killed your brother, what was his name? Mm, raise your head on this pillow. No longer have to worry. Run, oh, run, a hey, run, child, run, oh, but how did them be da boomed? But how do them be da run through the desert? Pouring rain, five years old, escape the flame. You cannot lay down to sleep, nor can you lay down to weep. Tractor trailers, buses, cars, packed together in the dark. Just when you see the sunlight, go through it all again. Just Run, oh, run, a run, child, run, oh, oh, but I did and be done, but I'll do and be done. Make sure that they don't find you, they'll try to cage and tie you down, rip you from mom and daddy, face pressed against the ground. You saw my arms wide open, I showed you clear blue sky. Um, I hate to tell you, baby, it was all a lie. So, child, hide your face, child, dry your tears. Now we own you, maybe for years. Mm, baby, I hate to tell you that we just plan to sell you, child. Run from them, child. Run from us, child. No one here, child. You can trust mm, freedom. You thought that you'd see. Is nothing but hard, cold, concrete. Run, oh, run, hey, run, child, run. Oh, we do better, dee, and be done. Do better, be do, 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 run, hey, run, oh, run, child, run, hey. I said, I'm your. Sanctuary, you should have 
If I had known that we were gonna be after that, then yeah, <laughs> what he said. Oh my gosh. Um, there you go. Um, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and from our hearts to um, Loretta and Roberta and Kyrie. Um, I am Sarah Lee Hughes, and this is Stephen Collins, and we brought, uh, we, we were lovelyly invited to bring the project to Unlikely Friends. and. Um, I'm so glad I wrote this down. Um, uh, <clears throat> so my name is Sarah Lee Hughes, and I'm an artist, and I created the animations for the journey of two unlikely friends. Um, this animated film highlights the story of Michael Kent, a former neo-Nazi, and his very unlikely friendship with his probation officer, Tiffany Whittier. Um, Stephen first heard Michael and Tiffany's story at a conference in 2018, and he approached me with the idea to combine art and music to tell Michael and Tiffany's story. I was so excited by this possibility that I could use my work to tell someone else's story and make an impact that I jumped at this opportunity. Um, my inspiration for the animation um, comes with the deep appreciation uh, for the work of South African artist William Kentridge. Uh, he created an animated film style that centers on telling stories through one drawing, making small changes, and photographing that drawing every 10 to 12 seconds. This is a very unlike traditional animation in that uh, traditional animation usually creates a cell for every image. I'm shaking. I'm so, thank you um, for making me shake. The process is much like a dance. Um, I begin with a mark, and I walk back to my camera, and I take a picture, and I approach the paper, and I make a mark. Um, and throughout, I remained very engaged in order to make an incremental change and illustrate the story. And in the end, I'm left with one image, um, and all the other images uh, preceding it are gone. In this case, we have um, nine images that are left from the entire film, which is on view in the atrium there for you. Um, so to start, I storyboarded the essential moments using Stephen's music and his lyrics to guide me. Oh my gosh. And they became sequences. Oh. Okay, some sequences began with like a building of the environment. Um, if you watch the film, you'll see Michael Kent's uh, mobile home kind of come into fruition. And some sequences are already, there are in an environment as Tiffany Whittier's office when she receives Michael Kent's case file. An example of a drawing that, and a sequence that no longer exist are the far drawing uh, on the ex exhibit where um, Prior to that, we see Michael's torso, which is covered in hate propaganda, and his picture balls up, and it turns into a heart, and the heart morphs into a bird and flies off. That only exists now in the film. The drawing is gone. Um, and you can re see all of these images, uh, all of the drawings and the film over in the atrium. You know, it wasn't until this work was finished that Stephen made the comment that this method of working is a metaphor for Michael's story, his change of heart, and his change of appearance. And the hatred and cynicism is now a ghost. Michael worked very closely with Redemption Inc., which is a non-for-profit group, and they remove hate propaganda, and they also remove trafficking branding. Um, and with their help, he was able to make a heartfelt change, not only on the inside, but that change was able to be met on the outside. Stephen. Thank you very much, Sarah. Well, the, uh, her work is fantastic, and 
I, uh, I, I'm just really humbled to be able to work with someone like her. So thank you, Sarah, for what you do. <laughs> and all you artists, my notes are on my phone. So I'll, my name is Stephen Collins, and I'm a singer, songwriter, band leader, record producer. I've been in music for about 20 years. And I want to tell you a little bit about our project. Um, I was trying to find a way to um, incorporate storytelling into my own work. And I was invited to uh, see a friend's show at a local place here in Austin. And uh, I went to go see it. And I noticed when I was there that no one was paying attention to the music. Uh, it was as if they didn't want that to happen. There, I did notice that everyone was on their phone or they were looking at the TV or they were moving back away from it. And um, so I started to think, why is that? You know, 30 years ago, music would have been enough, and now it doesn't seem to be enough. It's just one part of a whole. We're, you know, trapped by these things, but that doesn't mean we have to be. So I started to think, what makes us pay attention? What are the stories that make us uh, pay attention, and what can relieve the cynicism and apathy that we have uh, currently to engage our hearts with one another, which is what this event's about? So I wanted to find out a way to tell those stories and write songs about that. But the songs, like I said, aren't enough, so we needed visuals. We need stories to connect us, but how do you do that? I didn't know how, but in 2018, I went to a conference in Nashville, and I saw Michael Kent and Tiffany Whittier speak at an event much like this, in a small crowd, and I had an idea right then. Those are the kinds of stories, stories that seem impossible, but all of a sudden, with a small action from someone else, lead to massive change. I said, that's what, that's what I want to do. So I had an idea. Let's, let's take these ideas that make us truly pay attention, and let's pair them together with other artists, visual artists and musicians. So I formed a nonprofit called Moving Pictures, which is in its infancy right now. This is our first project together. Uh, this is the first project that we've done with it. New Moving Pictures provides uh, funding for songwriters and musicians to collaborate with fine artists to tell redemptive stories through their collective mediums. And the stories are shared via smartphone, social media, gallery environments like the one you have here, or museums, educational environments like this one, and also presented live with the band. In each story, a large change is made by someone doing something seemingly small. Each story promotes an organization or a charity which is already doing something that's related to that story directly or indirectly. Two Unlikely Friends is the first story that we've told, and I collaborated with Sarah Lee Hughes to tell this story of Michael Kent and Tiffany Whittier. It's extraordinary how one person who was trapped in hate was led to change on the inside by a simple loving action of a person that he thought was his enemy and who, thought, who she, th she thought was just doing her job. And how a nonprofit tattoo artist and parlor could change him and others like him on the outside by creating, creating something new and a whole new life for a whole new man. So that's what we're doing, and we appreciate you having us, Roberta and Loretta. It's our honor to be here. I hope you enjoy the work. Text non hate to 313131 to find out more about what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank All right, how's everyone doing? You having a good afternoon? You said no? Overwhelmed, awesome, awesome, okay. Uh, so I was, as I was thinking about what I was gonna say to you, um, then I heard uh, Fatima, I said, maybe I'll ask the audience for three words. And I quickly realized that I wouldn't be able to put it together that quickly, and it just wouldn't go as well. Um, and though I've just had a great tutorial using the maraca, I don't think I'm quite ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I've just been uh, just awestruck and just, just overwhelmed myself by all the talents of our amazing community members and, and students today. Uh, let's, give a, let's give them a round of applause again. Yeah. Uh, as you all know, I'm Kyrie Williams. I'm the new director for the Truth on Racial Healing and Transformation Campus Center, and I'm also brand new. So I'm brand new to the Austin community. I'm brand new to ACC. Um, so these are all new things to me. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, 
so, so, so part of being new is, is um, you really, you take, as you're taking in everything new, um, you can just be overwhelmed and excited and all that good stuff, which is great, um, but you also have to balance that with, with there's still work to do. Um, so I'm, so I'm, I'm being educated on both sides. Uh, yesterday, I, I attended the uh, MLK festivities, um, the, the march. Um, uh, I, I was there for the whole day. Uh, it's, it's, and I've lived in, let's see, five cities now and worked at four different institutions. And that's the most expansive and diverse crowd I've ever seen. It's a, it, it partook in MS, MLK festivities. Um, so that's really just a testament to the, uh, the, the, the work and the commitment and the love and the passion for doing this work in, in, the, in the Austin community. Um, so I think that's amazing and great, and, and I'm excited to be a part of this community. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. But as I reflected on that, what, what I realized is as, I, is we, we, as human beings, sometimes we have the tendency to attend events like this um, and, and, and feel all warm and bubbly and kind of walk away and, and kind of check it off our list. Um, so my challenge to you today is to really to think about, uh, as we think about truth and racial healing, it's a, it's a you know, three, 365 days a year, it's a commitment it's to, to doing the work. It's not going to an event like this and checking, this off, checking it off. It's not being impacted by something like this and walking away and saying that was a nice event, but it's really challenging each other to say, well, what can, we, what can I do with this? How can I share this with people that weren't here? Um, how can I engage in the work and, and, and contribute to the work? Um, even as I think about Dr. King's work, I think it's very easy for us to listen to his, his speeches um, or to think about him and feel all warm and bubbly and just walk away from it. Um, but I think when I think about truth and racial healing, when I think about Dr. King's work and his legacy, it was really about acknowledging some of the past trends, 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 transgressions and inequities. Um, but then it's also, and also you know, re realizing the present ones. And then it's the next step is saying, okay, what can we do and what can I do? Okay. And then I connected it to the ACC tagline. So ACC is for everyone. And I said, who's the everyone? And I believe that everyone is for us. Um, so not all of us can sing or dance or um, be gifted and talented in music or spoken word or poetry or uh, good at the maraca like me. Um, but everyone brings something to the table. Everyone has a gift or talent. Everyone has something that they do better than me, better than you, better than you. Um, so what that means is how can I use my gift and talent to continue this work? Um, how can I walk away from this event and continue to make ACC and Austin a better community by doing my part? Um, so my challenge to you is, um, I hope you enjoy this event, that you'll share how you're impacted um, by this event with someone else, but then, then the next step is how can you engage in this work and continue to make this a better place? Um, the everyone is us, we are the everyone. We have to all be committed to this work, not just on the National Day of Racial Healing, not that just on um, Dr. King's birthday, but every day of the year. Um, it's our, our responsibility to make this a better community, to make this world a better world. It starts by doing this work, but it starts by, it continues by being engaged in it. So I challenge you to really think about that, really think about how you can continue to um, be a part of this work, um, engage with us, if we can be, be a part of helping you to um, continue in this work. Um, yeah, and also just as you, as you see the art, artists and the performers and um, on the way out, make sure that you um, tell them they did a great job because it's not easy to be up here. Um, we have some refreshments in the back, so we want you to partake in those before you leave. Um, we have some flyers for our, uh, for our racial healing circles on Friday, so make sure you grab that information. Um, but share, share this word, share this message, and share how this is impact, you're impacted by this, and help us to continue this work to make ACC in Austin a better place. Thank you. I think we have one more performer, then we're going to leave you. Um, so don't walk away just quite yet. But thank you for being here. This is truly an investment in your, your part and taking time out of your day to be here. So thank you. Thank you, Kyrie. Welcome to Austin. Glad you got able to jump right into it, into the fried pan, because uh, that's awesome that you were able to participate yesterday. Um, as we transition into our last performance, we want to also invite you, if you have not registered to vote, there is voter registration in the back. In addition to the refreshments, as Dr. Malcolm said earlier today, this is a really important year. We've got to be serious. We've got to take our responsibilities seriously. And we encourage you, if you have not registered, you know someone who has, excuse me, has not registered, please encourage them to do so before February 3rd, because the election is coming up on March 3rd. And we need all voices, all people present and accounted for in that voting process, as well as the census 
please take advantage of the opportunity to get registered because that ultimately has an impact on our, our representation at the federal level, federal funds, federal uh, congressmen, senators, all of that. It's all counted. So thank you again for your presence here today. And I now present to you Danielle Yanis. I love being here. It's really great uh, with all of you and all of the incredible art. So it's up to us. What kind of world do you want? What kind of world do you want to see? What kind of world do you want? What kind of world are you going to be? Make it so, make it so, make it so. I want a world where clean water flows. I want a world where the natural grasses grow. I want a world where the air is sweet and clean and bright, letting in that beautiful rainbow light. Make it so, make it so, make it so. I want a world with the corn and the bean and the squash. I want a world with the forests and the mountains and the jungles lush. I want a world with the fishes in a clean blue sea and the land with the creepy crawlies and the deer and the bear and the antelope and the butterfly and you and me. Make it so, make it so, make it so. What kind of world do you want? What kind of world do you want to see? What kind of world do you want? What kind of world are you going to be? Make it so, make it so, make it so. Oh, God bless you all. If you performed any way today, performed any, if, if you presented, performed in any way today, can you please stand? Just give them a round of applause again. All right. I don't know if Dr. went, but she, did she, is she? Can we, can we give her a round of applause? She did all the heavy lifting on this. I just joined us. Mm -hmm. And can we also acknowledge our leaders that made it possible for us to have this event, Dr. Malcolm and Provost and the board? Mm -hmm. All right. Please enjoy the refreshments and thank you for coming. All right.